Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Western Canada here in the city of Victoria, the capital of the province of British Columbia. I hope that everybody is off to a great weekend and I'm happy to have you here with me. Uh, right now we are looking at an IELTS reading section. We are going to be looking at a reading passage about a piece of technology that we all use every day. Many of you might be using it right now. The touch screen. And of course uh, this material is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there and for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have original practice exams, fully interactive courses, video lessons, and they will help you to get the maximum score possible on your website. This reading passage today is coming from our academic website, aehelp.com. And um, it could be a general section three reading as well. So section three of the general reading exam is very similar to uh, the academic reading passages. Uh, welcome Kyber, uh, welcome Amra, uh, Carolina. Good to see uh, many people uh, joining in on the class. Okay. All right, welcome uh, Rashika as well. Just gonna check the settings here, make sure that everybody can join the class. Yeah, subscribers can join. Okay, that's great. So yeah, we I can now see uh, Shucks Noza, Del Hidaits, Anish, Rabi joining in, which is fantastic. Good to have all of you with me here today. This is our academic IELTS website, everybody. We will be using this today for reading. So I will ask students to read today and I can give you feedback on your reading. You can click this uh, red button that's just above my head there uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access where official British Council test registration centers and certified agents. And you can use uh, a discount code here, um, xr 9 T, I believe X nine RT. Nope. Let's check what that code is. All right. It's XR nine T. Yes, there it is. So XR nine T. There we go. So use that code either on our academic or general IELTS website. XR nine T. Yes, that worked that time. Uh, make sure you enter the code accurately. Uh, and uh, same thing on the general IELTS. By the way, on general IELTS, we now have Google Pay. Um, so you can use your Google Pay for general IELTS. And we will have Google Pay coming soon to academic IELTS as well. So exciting times. We're growing and growing. Okay, um, so back to our lesson here. Um, if you have questions about the reading or about other sections of the IELTS exam, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, um, and uh, also, yeah, get our apps. Um, our apps link to our websites, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help from your app stores. Check that out. Um, all right, so. Um, our schedule, we have our schedule here uh, and we've got classes coming up tomorrow as well. We will have task one for members and speaking part three for everyone. Uh, ho guy, Homa, if you want to apply, that's fantastic. If you're not sure how to do it, send me an email. Luda, good to see you in the class. All right. Okay, uh, Anish, we are going to add all of our uh, classes from our Academic English Help channel to our General English Help channel. For right now, we're not doing live classes on the General English Help channel just because we want to make sure that these classes go nice and 
smooth. So we're focusing our attention on this channel. Okay, let's uh, take a look at reading because that's why you're here, right? Some people are probably like, come on, come on, Adrian, let's get reading. Okay, let's get reading. Sure, why not? All right, here we go. This is a reading passage, okay? So uh, this reading passage, it's reading passage three. Um, and um, it's, uh, I think it has about like, I don't know, 700, 750 words on average, okay? First step is first, read the title. So we're going to read the title. Title is right there. Touch screens, 20th century invention, 21st century commonplace. Okay, everybody knows what touch screens are. But, 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 I'm touching the screen. I'm touching the screen. No, you're probably touching the screen. You're probably touching my face. Um, okay. So touchscreen, um, it's our way to navigate our modern devices, uh, to select functions, to move around in functions, um, to draw pictures, to play games, to edit videos. We use touchscreens for all kinds of um, operations, to withdraw money from the bank, to deposit money into the bank, um, and um, to make purchases, to communicate with each other, and so on. Um, we can touch with one finger. Some of us are super fast uh, thumb typers. Um, so lots and lots going there. By the way, touch screens are, uh, were made very, very popular. Thumb typing was made very, very popular by uh, the Canadian Blackberry phones. Um, okay, so uh, we've got that. Let's look at the questions. What kind of questions do we have here? Hmm, here we go. Uh, so we've got some... Um, some summary uh, type questions here. So title of summary topic, we got capacitive touchscreens. We've got uh, resistive touchscreens. So now we know that we've got two types of touchscreens that we're dealing with in this reading passage. And uh, we can see that we've got some more topics here. No hands required. Okay, that's good. Ooh, and then the infamous true, false, not given type question. Uh, we just released a reading video, an HD reading video on the channel. Um, and uh, that HD video also has yes, no, not given questions. So maybe some of you watched that video that we put on our channel uh, with a reading uh, about five hours ago. Uh, check that out. That's an awesome video, by the way. Um, and uh, you've got lots of uh, strategy there for true, false, not given. Yes, no, not given. So check out that video. Um, and subscribe to the channel, by the way, everybody. Hit your bell, hit the subscribe. Make sure that you, you, know, you follow us um, so that you get all of these goodies. Okay, um, so uh, we've got the questions. Um, these questions, uh, title of summary, it's all in the passage. So let's read these together. Now, uh, make sure to read. Okay, so read with me. Boom, huge letters, read with me. Um, because this is reading, don't just listen, then it's just a listening exercise. This is a reading exercise, so listen and read. And you know what, if you really want to do a great job, read aloud so you can hear yourself, <clears throat> okay? So read aloud. So read with me. So let's do this. Let's uh, read these questions. All right. Title of summary topic. Capacitive touchscreens. Johnson's touchscreens used something as an insulator and a transparent conductor coating. The something worked as the conductor and because the dose of electricity was small it did not affect the person's health resistive touchscreens this technology was developed by accident instead of making calculations by hand they used a special kind of something which conducted electricity when the researchers applied for a patent for the technology, they were denied. 
patent officers did not believe the technology had any something applications outside of the laboratory. Hearst was no longer bothered by worries about something, so he toiled in his off hours with friends to refine his invention. No hands required. Hearst developed his technology to the point that while one could still use a finger to manipulate the touchscreen, a person could also use a something, a device akin to a pen with no ink. All right, so we've got some touchscreen technology going on. Clearly, we've got two different kinds of touchscreen. We've got a couple of different people here, right? So we've got Hearst, who seems to be a key figure in this reading passage. And at the beginning, I saw another name, Johnson. Pay attention to these unique nouns because they will help you to find answers, okay? It's a really important tip, all right? Um, again, another um, unique um, adjective here is capacitive, and the other one is resistive. So you really want to have that clear in your head when you're doing the reading passage. Now, um, the true false not given, I don't worry about that right now because I don't know which answers are false or not given, so I don't want to get confused by faulty or uh, unavailable information. So instead of reading those, I go straight for the passage. Straight for the passage. Let's do it. Okay, now, um, in order to get a high band score, everyone, so to get a band 7, band 8, band 9, to really get those good band scores for master's, PhD, doctorate degrees, uh, to get good jobs, to get uh, fast track visas, you have to understand what you're reading. You can't just randomly scan and skim for answers. That's the definition of insanity, okay? You will take way too long trying to do that, all right? So you do have to read. If you're having trouble reading the passage in 10, 12 minutes, then you need to increase your reading speed. It's as simple as that. If you don't like what I'm saying, too bad. It's reality. I'm not going to lie to you to make you happy, okay? All right, so you have to be able to read it. Ideally, you're reading between eight to 10 minutes and leaving 10 to 12 minutes for answers, okay? So you have to be systematic. Your eyeballs can't be like, um, your eyeballs have to be systematic, systematic, right? Key word in IELTS reading, be systematic. Okay, we've got lots of students in the class. Engin, me, Lee, Anish, Simran, An, Woohoo! Let's do this. So again, read aloud, everyone. Okay. Read aloud it means listen to yourself reading. Okay. Read aloud. All right. Okay. Here we go, everybody. Read with me. Okay. Reading practice. So touch screens. Twentieth century invention. Twenty first century commonplace. And visualize. See the information. Okay. The touchscreen is everywhere in modern society. That's the hook. If you watched the last class on writing task two, that's your hook. Okay. So, sorry, one more time. I just got excited. Um, the touchscreen is everywhere in modern society. While the most commonplace touchscreens are, encounter, uh, are encountered as mobile phones, touchscreens are also found in ATMs grocery stores, computers and tables, parking meters, cars, restaurants, medical equipment, and countless other applications. They are a part of everyday life that most people take for granted. But how did they come to be? How do they work? The first touchscreen was developed in the mid 1960s by British scientist E. A. Johnson while working for the Royal Radar Establishment in Malvern, UK. Johnson's invention utilized what came to be known as capacitive touch technology. It worked by using an insulator, usually glass, that had a transparent conductor coating 
uh, such as indium tin oxide, the finger acted as a conductor for electricity. A very small amount that was not damaging to a person's health that activated the desired input. This device had limitations. First, it could not handle multiple touches at the same time. That is, the device could only register one touch at a time. Second, it could not register sensitivity. It was like a light switch that registered either on or off and nothing in between. Touch screens that could handle variations of pressure would not come until decades later. Though Johnson's touch screens are, were lacking certain aspects of modern touch screens, they still found important uses in the latter decades of the 20th century. His touchscreen technology was implemented by air traffic controllers in the United Kingdom and was still in use until the late 1990s. Though Johnson's touchscreen was used throughout the latter part of the 20th century, it was quickly overshadowed in popularity by a different type of touchscreen technology, resistive. This technology was developed by accident in the early 1970s by G.S. Hurst while working at the University of Kentucky. While working through the night on a particle accelerator, Hurst and his team wanted a faster way to complete their computations. They came upon the solution of using electrically conductive paper to read coordinates instead of calculating them by hand. A side effect of this work was that the electrically conductive paper also worked as a touch screen. The University of Kentucky applied for a patent, but was rejected. The discovery did not seem to the patent officers to have any relevant applications beyond the laboratory. Freed from intellectual property concerns, Hearst later worked during his off hours with a team of inventors, scientists, and engineers who also happened to be friends on refining his chance invention. Hearst knew that the technology was promising. How it worked was quite simple. The previously mentioned electrically conductive paper was used to cover a sheet containing the X and Y axes, which were connected to a power source. When pressure was put on the conductive cover sheet, voltage was allowed to pass between the X and Y wires, which was then instantaneously measured to indicate the position of the pressure. One advantage of the resistive technology over the capacitive technology was that it did not require the toucher to be specifically a finger. While it could certainly still be a finger, it could also be a stylus, a kind of a pencil type device to operate the touchscreen. In the 1990s, this led to a generation of so-called personal digital assistants, which used a stylus to operate a resistive touchscreen. Today, resistive touchscreens are still common around the world. Because they are cheaper and more durable, these devices can be found today in hospitals, factories, restaurants, and other retail environments. The next technological development, which was critical for the device you have in your pocket, is the ability for a touchscreen to be connected in more than one position, i.e. with two fingers at once. This functionality is fundamental to the operation of modern smartphones. Multiple finger gestures are made to zoom in and out of web pages, photos, or maps, among other useful functions. Interestingly, this technology is built upon the foundation laid by E.A. Johnson in the 1960s and 70s. 
The capacitive aspect of the touchscreen, while certainly more complex than previous iterations, is fundamentally the same as that from half a century ago. Modern modifications have allowed for multiple touch points as well as pressure gradations, but the technology is remarkably similar to its origins. One negative aspect of capacitive touch technology is that a user cannot use a stylus or other object since these objects do not conduct electricity like a finger. But this has changed in recent years. For example, in 2015, Apple unveiled the Apple Pencil, which used highly responsive sensors built into the tip of the uh, pencil to detect force, position, and pencil tilt to provide a multitude of effects. What is the future of touchscreens? 50 years since their advent, the possibilities seem endless. One fact seems doubtless, however, touchscreens are a huge part of our lives and all evidence points to this staying the case for the foreseeable future. All right, that was pretty intense, but uh, not so bad. I, you know, I think that was about eight, nine minutes of reading. And read you must, students, you have to read. So now we can answer these questions. However, I don't want to rush, okay? When you're practicing IELTS reading, don't rush to practice. Pra the goal of practice is for you to learn, okay? So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do it together by reading together. Okay, so uh, Respect 404, how can you s improve your English pronunciation by doing nice aloud reading? And we're going to practice that right now. So um, we have some steps for reading and we can do this together, okay? So we're going to use our website uh, for hearing students read and I will give you strategies for the reading section while we do this. And this will also help us with the questions for a little bit later in the class. Okay, so to volunteer for reading, woo, to volunteer for reading, what you need to do is just do something there. There we go. Okay, so um, what you need to do is this. Uh, you need to go to the website. Let me show you this instead of read it for you. So go to our website. Uh, go to aehelp.com. Okay, go to this website here. This is, again, um, aehelp.com. Let me get a little bit bigger size here. There we go. So this is uh, www.aehelp.com. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see that more or less clearly um, and then uh, click on join now to join our premium IELTS package or you can click on try demo uh, to uh, try the demo account okay and that's free I've already created one so it's just asking me to go to my student account and I'm gonna go to my student account that's at the top as well for me here and in my student account, um, I have this uh, student partner speaking function right there. Okay, that's just right above my head, right there. By the way, uh, students, you can book um, IELTS speaking interview sessions with me also if you click on this uh, yellow uh, speaking interview practice button if you want. You do not have to buy the premium package for that. You can do that through your demo account as well. Okay, so uh, let's go to student partner speaking. Now in student partner speaking, we've been doing this for a while now where we get people to read because it helps you to practice your reading. It helps other students learn about what to do during the reading section and you learn English, right? You learn new vocabulary. Uh, you learn how to interpret the reading, okay? All right, um, so here we have many many lovely students coming into um, this page the list keeps going under uh, Sam we have Krutik we have me um, so you see all of these lovely people joining in to the chat um, and then you will see me as master 
And when you send me a message, uh, then I will be able to contact you and you can do a bit of reading. So Krutik uh, just sent me a message. Let's reach out to Krutik. So hi, Krutik. Would you like to read a paragraph for us? Okay. Let's see. And then um, as we read, I'll teach you strategy. I'll give you a bit of feedback on your reading as well. Critique says yes. All right, Critique. Let's do this. Hi, Critique. Uh, hello, sir. How are you doing? Uh, sir, I am fine and uh, I am practicing for my IELTS. I have a date on 9th June. 9th of June. Awesome. Are you doing the academic or the general version of the IELTS? Uh, sir, I am opting for academic as I completed my bachelor's of uh, engineering in recent months and uh, then I will have to go for further studies in Canada. So that's the reason I will go for academic. I see. In Canada. Awesome. That's great. Yes. Uh, critique, if your YouTube is still going, just mute it so we don't get feedback, okay? Okay, sir. All right, Critique. So let's do reading. Reading is uh, an important part of the IELTS exam, as you know. And uh, this is an academic reading, but you could see this in general as well. Okay, Critique. So um, I will ask you to read the uh, title and then uh, read the first paragraph, okay? Whenever you're ready, go ahead, read from touch screens, from the very top, from the title. Yes. Touch screens, 20th century invention, 21st century commonplace. The touch screen is everywhere in modern society. While the most commonplace touch screens are encountered is mobile phones. Touch screens are also found in ATMs, grocery stores, computers, and tablets parking meters, cars, restaurants, medical equipment, and countless other applications. They are a part of everyday life that most people take for granted. But how did they come to be? How do they work? Nice, nice reading. Okay, that was great. Nice, uh, I like how you intonated. Now, um, here's an important tip, okay? Uh, for you when you're doing your reading practice. Of course, in the real IELTS exam critique, you're not going to read aloud uh, because then the proctor will be like, hey, stop doing that. What are you doing? Have you gone mad? Um, so you're reading silently, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but even when you're reading silently, this is an important tip for your IELTS exam, okay? So even when you read silently, your inner voice should be the same as when you uh, read aloud for an audience. Okay. Yes. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes, sir. That uh, I will have to read the same passage in same manner, but uh, I will have to stay, I mean, have to remain silent. And uh, that's the reason I will do the same. Yeah, kind of. That's kind of what I kind. Of, well, yes, in essence, yes. Um, to be more specific, what I mean is make sure you have intonation, make sure you have pauses, make sure you read uh, the punctuation. Okay, so uh, make sure you have intonation and you read punctuation. Yes. In your inner voice. The reason I say that is because a lot of students, they kind of freak out when they're doing the IELTS exam. So what they do is they read like as if they're reading a magazine article that they don't really care about. So when they're reading their inner voice, I'll give you an example of what, what I mean. Their inner voice is like this. The touchscreen is everywhere in modern society. While the most commonplace touchscreens are encountered as mobile phones, touchscreens are also found in ATMs, grocery stores, computers and tablets, parking meters, cars, restaurants, medical equipment, and countless other applications that are part of everyday life most people take for granted, but how do they come to be? How do they work? So that was like a crazy robot just ripping through all of the text, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And unfortunately, a lot of candidates do that when they get to the reading section. But that doesn't work, right? Because if yeah. you read like that, yeah, sure, you look at all the words very quickly, but you're not actually processing the information. You don't know what's going on. And then, you know what people always say to me when they read like that? They're like, 
um, Adrian, I read the passage, but I don't remember anything. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, I don't, if when I read like that, I don't remember anything either. Right? It's just a whole bunch of words that are just kind of washed together like an ocean of information. Um, so you can't do that. So um, this is where slower is faster. So when you read the passage, you have to read it the same way that you just did with these ups and downs, taking a pause, getting the idea, and then moving to the next paragraph. That makes sense, right? Yes. Sir. Okay, good. Now, also with this introductory paragraph, notice that the author really wants you to visualize, right? Like the author is telling you that you're using touch screens with ATMs and the grocery store, parking meters. So they're not doing that by accident. What they want you to do as the reader is to see yourself, see yourself in your everyday life. Okay, so this is critique, walking to the store, buying some apples and beep, 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 there you are typing in your password on a touch screen um, to pay for your groceries, okay? Yes, sir. All right, so keep that in mind. This is a part of what's called active reading and you have to read actively in IELTS to get all, a lot of the answers correct, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, keep watching. I'm going to grab a couple more volunteers um, and give more strategies as we go along, okay? And oh. I wish you really good luck on your exam. I think you're going to do great because just based on how you read this and how you're talking to me, I definitely think that you're between a band seven and eight level, okay? So, um, so I think you'll do great on your June exam. Yes, sir. I'm aiming for higher bands and that's the reason I'm obsessed with your videos and I just uh, keep going for your live sessions. Awesome. Use our website too. I mean, if you know, if uh, you can't use the premium course, use the free version, but definitely use the website like what you're doing right now, talking to me through the website as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sure. Okay, Critique. Thanks for being the first volunteer. We'll talk later. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye. That was great, so critique, yeah, very good. So again, remember everybody, inner voice has to be the same as your loud voice. All right, um, we've got lots more volunteers here. We've got Sam volunteering. Let's see if Sam will read a paragraph for us. Okay, uh, Sam, are you there? Uh, would you like to read a paragraph with us? Hopefully, Sam is still with us. If not, we'll reach out to somebody else, okay? But that's the idea, so good job there, all right? Carolina, thanks for the uh, thumbs up. Awesome. Okay, uh, and Sam's not really responding, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, okay. Volunteers, people, volunteers. So we've got lots of people in here. We've got Harwinder, or sorry, uh, Kowinder, Harman, Deep, uh, Orlando, me, Ayush, Amra. Um, so we need volunteers to read, okay? All right. Okay, Kowinder. Let's see, I'm ready to volunteer. Okay, let's see, are you uh, there? Now I see people volunteering, that's good. Okay, just I'm encouraging everybody. There's a few volunteers for sure, so. I'll go through them, don't worry. I'm just encouraging everybody to give it a try. And if you're there, let me know. I always um, kind of uh, respond in the chat first. So Colwinder, if you're there and you would like to read a paragraph, awesome. Hello. Hi, Cole Winder. How are you? I'm a good, fine, sir. How about what are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. Yeah, I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so I'm a bit hyperactive. You can probably hear that in my yeah. voice. <laughs> um, I, and... I don't uh, watch the topic of your video. Yeah. So I'm nervous. <laughs> it's all good. All right, Cole yeah. Winder. So let's do a bit of reading and then I'll talk a bit more strategy, okay? Uh, so, Colwinder, I'll actually get you to read this nice big paragraph here, starting with the first touch screen. So, whenever you're ready, just read it. Okay, uh, from YouTube. Uh, yes, yeah. The first touch screen was developed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
ഓക്കെ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടച്ച് ഷുഡ് ഐ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് The first touch screen was developed in the mid 1960s by British scientist EF Johnson while working for the Royal Radar Exhibition in the Melbourne UK Johnson UK Johnson's invention utilized what came to be known as captive uh, touch technology it worked by using an insulator usually glass that had a transparent conductor coating such as indium tin oxide the finger acted as a conductor for electricity a very small amount that was not damaging to a person's health that activated the desired input this device had limitations first it could not handle multiple touches at the same time that is that why device could only register one touch ah We kind of lost you there. I don't know anybody else hearing the reading still. I'm not. I think uh we lost Cole Winder. Uh, maybe an internet um disturbance. No, no, there. I am here. Oh, I'm okay, here. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Go for it. Go okay. Just keep going. So, okay. Uh, I cannot This I device this had l- this device had limitations. Okay. Okay. So, okay, sir. Uh, I okay. Right from there. This device had limitations. Uh, okay. First it could not handle multiple touches at the same time. That is the device could only register one touch at a time. Second it could not register sensitivity. Okay, this device had limitations. First it could not handle multiple touches at the same time. That is the device could only register one touch at a time. Second it could not register sensitivity. It was like a light switch that registered either on or off and nothing in between. The screen that could handle variations of pressure. All right. Uh I think we're losing you again, Colwinder. Are you still there? maybe you're using a mobile trying to switch between applications and that's causing a bit of issue too many touches going on on that touch screen um call winder if you come back let me know i'm still here with you but i'm going to actually give you an interesting strategy based on what's happening with call winder call winder when you come back if you come back Um we'll do this uh, here in a second actually let me see if I can find you here. Okay, you're still in the call co window. So if you come back uh, then let me know. Um so there you are co. Okay, I'm here. Okay, okay. I am cool. here. Awesome. Okay, co window. Don't worry about reading the rest. I'm going to actually give you a okay. strategy here, okay? Okay. So a very important part of reading and getting a good band score on IELTS is reading without barriers so reading without stopping okay so this is another important tip or strategy oops okay sir uh, reading without stopping that. yeah so yeah so uh tip okay uh read without uh stopping or without barriers okay Now nope. the most common reason why um candidates get stuck is because they come across new words or words that they can't pronounce. And we can trip up when we're reading aloud, but we can also trip up inside of our heads as well, okay? So this is usually caused okay uh by new words or difficult to pronounce words. Okay. Okay, so the trick is to read through it, okay? So read oh. through these words and do not worry about pronunciation or meaning. Okay? Now when you're oh. at home, there's kind of a trick that you can do to practice this, okay? So this is a trick. Okay? Uh read oh. difficult words twice. so underline difficult words read them twice 
and then reread. Okay, let me show you what I mean by this, okay? okay. Are you ready? Okay, so yes. when you were reading this, Colwinder, you, you read, the first touchscreen was developed in the mid-1960s by British scientists, and then the first place you got stuck was this guy's name, E.A. Johnson, okay? <laughs> Um, E.A. Johnson, um, you read it twice, so just repeat after me. E.A. Johnson. E.A. Johnson. E.A. Johnson. E.A. Johnson. All right. Now, this first sentence had more words to trip you up, so the Royal Radar Establishment in Malvern, UK. So repeat after me. Malvern, UK. Malvern, UK. Malvern, UK. And it tripped you up one more time, all within one sentence. Capacitive. 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 Okay, so what you want to do when you're practicing at home is underline any word that's causing you this kind of a problem, read it twice aloud, and then reread the sentence. So I'm going to reread okay. this sentence now. The first touchscreen was developed in the mid-1960s by British scientist E.A. Johnson while working for the Royal Radar Establishment in Malvern, UK. Johnson's invention utilized what came to be known as capacitive touch technology. It's actually two sentences, but that's what you do, okay? Now try to read this sentence one more time. Can you see the sentence? Can you read it one more time for me? Okay. Okay, so can you hear my voice? I can, yes. Okay, okay, I think here is a problem, okay. Okay, uh, from this sentence, the first touch screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, the first touch screen was developed in mid 90s by British scientist E. A. Johnson while working for the Royal Radar Establishment in the Walvan, UK. Very good. Next sentence. Johnson's invention utilized what came to be known as capacitive touch technology. Very nice. Okay, the reason why it's so important that you don't trip up while you're reading, Colwinder, is because if you, yeah. if you trip up, you lose comprehension very, very yeah, much, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what happens. Even a lot of people who have good reading skills, they get to the IELTS, they read about a topic like touchscreens, which has you know some unique words and names, and even they get frustrated because they're like, oh, I, I have good reading, but I don't understand what's going on because of all these words, right? Well, it's because they keep tripping up while they're reading, right? So this is the kind of practice that you want to do at home so that you don't trip up. Now, in the real IELTS, if you see new words, just read through them. Don't worry about the pronunciation. Don't worry about the meaning. Just read through so that you can get the overall meaning of the paragraph, okay? All right, and I think we lost Cole Winder there, but I think Cole Winder got what I was saying with that, and I'm sure everybody else did too, okay? Uh, can I get some thumbs up? That was a really important point because that's one of the most common situations. Cole Winder, I, th I hear you're back. Right? Okay, yeah. okay. when I switched from YouTube to your site, then there is lost connections. Yeah. Also, I are, think. are you like, using a mobile okay. phone? Yeah, I'm using my phone. Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah. For these kinds of classes, yeah. I mean, laptops, desktops, it's a little, little bit better. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. one of the one of the challenges. So touch screens are great, but we need to make them even better, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. All right, Colwinder, okay. thank you for volunteering. Okay. We'll take another okay. Thanks for thanks for taking me in. Okay. It yeah, was absolutely nice to talk to you. Okay. Bye, Colwinder. Thank you. Okay, so that was Call Winder uh, off the, the mobile phone. Yeah, laptops, desktops, definitely. You got more space, more software. Uh, good thumbs up there, everybody. Yeah, so that's an important one. Don't trip up. Okay, uh, let's take another volunteer. Uh, let's take me. I already reached out to Sam, I think. Me, would you like to volunteer? Or are you still there? I think you're still there because you're giving me a thumbs up, right? Are you there? Uh, would you like to read a paragraph? Okay. I'm seeing a lot of guys in the chat right now. Not too many girls, but hopefully we get some. I see another one, Sabina. I don't know if Sabina wants to volunteer. Okay, Sabi Okay, me. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Hello, sir. Hi, me. How are you? 
I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> All right, me. Um, are you ready to read? Uh, yes. Okay, great. So, um, start from though Johnson's touch screen. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay. Though Johnson's touch screen was used throughout the latter part of the 20th century, it was quickly overshadowed in popularity by a different type of touch screen technology, resistive. This technology was developed by accident in the early 1970s by G.S. Hurst while working at the University of Kentucky. While working through the night on a particle accelerator, Hurst and his team wanted a faster way to complete their computations. They came upon the solution of uh, they came upon the solution of using electrically conductive paper to read coordinates instead of calculating them by hand. A side effect of this work was that the electrically conductive paper also worked as a touch screen. Uh, sorry, I cannot mm -hmm. say. It's the coming. Rest. Don't worry. <laughs> the University of Kentucky applied for a patent but was rejected. The discovery did not seem to the patent officers to have any relevant applications beyond a laboratory. Freed from intellectual property concerns, Hearst later worked during his off hours with a team of inventors, scientists, and engineers who also happened to be friends on refining his chance invention. Hearst knew that the technology was promising. How it worked was quite simple. The previously mentioned electrically conductive paper was used to cover the sheet containing the X and Y axis, which were connected to a power source. When pressure was put on the conductive cover sheet, voltage was allowed to pass between the X and Y wires, which was then intensely measured to the indicator indicate the position of the pressure. One advantage of the resistive technology over the capacitive technology was that it did not require the toucher to be specifically a finger. While it could certainly still be a finger, it could also be a stylus, a kind of pencil type device to operate the touch screen. In the 1990s, this led to a generation of so-called personal digital assistants which used a stylus to operate a resistive touchscreen. Today, resistive touchscreens are still common around the world because they are cheaper and more durable. These devices can be found today in hospitals, factories, restaurants, and other retail environments. Very nice. Okay, good. So, um, lots of information there, me, right? Yeah. Oh, boy, right? Lots of information. You don't need to remember all that. So, you know, sometimes when um, candidates are practicing for IELTS and they see a big paragraph like this, they kind of freak out. They're like, what? Um, but you don't need to freak out. Um, when you have a big paragraph like this, the goal isn't for you to understand every little detail of the paragraph. What you need to be focusing on is the main idea, okay? And that's my tip uh, for this paragraph here, okay? So tip, <clears throat> don't freak out. Do not panic uh, when you read a big paragraph with lots of information. There's usually one of these, at least in the test, by the way. So every IELTS that I've seen, there's at least one passage that has one massive paragraph with lots of information. And you have to keep your cool. Don't panic, okay? So do not panic when you read a big paragraph. The goal is still the same. To understand the main idea. Um, a little bit. Okay, you said you understand. Well, what is the main idea? What, according to what you read here, what do you think is the main idea? Um, the invention of uh, resistive touch screens. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, absolutely. So you've got the main idea. That was the main idea, the invention of the resistive touch screen. All right, now the paragraph, and they give you a lot of information of what it is, how it works, da 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 it doesn't matter. You can still get an awesome score. In fact, you can still get that band nine if you pay attention to a couple of key points. What does the paragraph, so sorry, I should say why. Why does the paragraph 
um, introduce resistive touchscreens? Um, to come maybe to compare mm -hmm. with the uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're definitely the, it's the right uh, answer. It, yes, to compare with the I don't remember the what. Does doesn't matter. Name. doesn't matter. The other one, right? You don't have to get stuck on the those details. One. To compare with the other one. To compare this touch screen uh, with the other one, right? Okay. It's capacitive, like capacity, capacitor, but it doesn't matter if you don't remember it. Capacitive. If you are an engineering student and you're working on technology, you probably should learn that, but otherwise, you don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, to, co to compare with the capacitive touchscreen. Okay, good. That's the right answer. So, so far you're doing great. So far, you know, you have all of the knowledge to keep going for that band nine. Now, one more piece here. Um, the question here, how are they different? So how is the resistive different? And keep it simple. Give me some of the differences. You don't have to catch all of them, but as long as you caught a couple, you're on the right track and that's all you need. So how is the resistive touchscreen different than the capacitive touchscreen? And um, viewers, when I'm asking me this, so just a sec, me, when I'm asking me this, I'm asking everybody this. So me and I are having a conversation, but me is kind of like the audience. You're all here with me. So think about answering this question and type it into the chat as well, okay? That might help me a little bit if she gets stuck, okay? So me, how is resistive different from capacitive? What are the differences? Um, the resistive touchscreen use, if we can use the stylus to use the resistive touchscreen. Mm -hmm. And the resistive touchscreen is uh, durable okay. and cheaper. And cheaper? And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and we can touch multiple touches. Mm -hmm. Multiple points, yeah. Okay, so we can use a stylus. It's durable, it's cheaper. We've got multiple points. All right, um, do you remember why we can use a stylus? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, doesn't matter. Just seeing if you pick that up, doesn't matter. Um, any other differences? I bet you know one more if you really, really, a really simple one, if you if you really concentrate, you know one more. Um, we can use the capacitive in, uh, in airplane, as I remember, and the touch screen you can use more in the, in the restaurants. No, 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 don't, don't make up information. That's definitely a big no-no, yeah. okay? Don't make, if you're not sure, don't make it up, okay? That's an important tip as well. Which one's a newer invention? Uh, the resistive touch screen. Okay, yeah, so simple, right? It's newer. Right? And that's an important fact, me, because when you have a timeline, when you have chronology and in the information, so you have older, newer, then it's important to keep chronology in your thoughts. So you should remember who came first, who came second. So obviously here, Johnson came first, capacitive came first, then Hearst came second, resistive came second. So you want to keep that chronology. Why am I telling you all this? Well, because probably the questions that are coming up, they're going to be asking you about this. Obviously, they're going to compare these two types of technology and they're going to compare these two timelines, right? So you want to remember that. Okay, uh, here's the good news, me. All of the information that you told me that this is about the invention of the resistive, that it's comparing the two types, that the difference is the stylus is durable, cheaper, multiple points. That's all you need to get from this big whopping paragraph to get answers correct, okay? IELTS is not a university exam. They will not say, they will usually not ask you a question like, um, what other piece of technology was Hearst working on while he invented? So you probably don't need to pay attention to like particle accelerator. There's a small chance, but probably not, okay? Okay. Main ideas. Um, the big difference, of course, the stylus um, you can use to answer that question because you're probably wondering, what was the answer to that stylus question? Um, that answer is you don't need a conductive material for the resistive. All you need is pressure. Um, for the capacitive touchscreen, you need something like a finger that conducts electricity, right? Humans are made of water, so we're great electrical conductors. That's why we shouldn't chew 
on the electrical cord uh, connected to the wall um, for babies, right? So uh, resistive, does that make sense? Like a resistive touchscreen, you can just use with anything. You can use a rubber ball. You just need pressure. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. Me. Great job. Keep it up. Okay. You're doing all the right, or you're taking all the right steps for good English. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, me. All Bye. right. Give me a thumbs up, or you can do like a perfect. Um, that was really good. Okay. All right, so good reading by me. Uh, how are we doing for time? Yeah, we're good, we're golden. We've got lots of time. Uh, let's see if I can find another female voice. Um, we have we had a few, I think Anandu is maybe a female voice. I'm not always familiar with names. Um, Anandu says, can I hop in for a reading? I'm a newbie. Okay, Anandu, let's see. Uh, are you there? Okay. All right, and we will get to the questions and we will answer the questions shortly, so hang in there, okay? More strategies coming at you. All right, an undo. Here we go. Ooh, that's loud. Hello? Hi, an undo. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you too. You sound a little bit distant, like you're a little bit far away, but I can hear you. Can you get a bit closer to the microphone? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh... Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better, Anandu. Okay, see, I thought Anandu might be a female name, but I guess not. <laughs> no, I'm actually male. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that. Otherwise, it'd be a very, very deep female voice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Anandu. So how, so how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, I actually had my German classes, so... I'm hoping just uh, to study some IELTS. Okay, did you say German classes? Yeah, I, I'm also studying German along with uh, English classes. Yeah, it's a good IELTS. combination. I mean, English is a Germanic language, right? So um, yeah, yeah. it's it's based English is basically German and French together. So if you study German and French, then English isn't that bad. You probably realize that, right? Like a lot of words in German yeah, are absolutely. the same as English. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, I, although it could be confusing sometimes, like sometimes, you know, a person will be like, are you speaking German right now or English? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, um, all right. Um, so let's uh, read this next paragraph. This one starts with the technological development. So please read that part, okay? Yeah, okay. The next technological development which was critical for the device you have in your pocket is the ability for a touch screen to be contacted in more than one position, i.e. with two fingers at once. This functionality is fundamental to the operation of modern smartphones. Multiple finger gestures are made to zoom in and out on web pages, photos or maps among other useful functions. Interestingly, this technology is built upon the foundation laid by E. A. Johnson in the 1960s and 1970s. The capacitive aspect of the touchscreen, while certainly more complex than the previous iterations, is fundamentally the same as the that form half a century ago. Modern modifications have allowed for a multiple touch points as well as pressure gradations, but the technology is remarkably similar to its origins. Very good. Okay, so what is this paragraph about? So, uh, this uh, paragraph is uh, about the uh, next possible inventions. Uh, is about the smartphone touchscreen. Uh, the the touchscreen can be used uh, with multiple gestures, like uh, multi finger gestures, uh, like right. That. Simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. So answer questions. There, it's very important, and this is a tip here: is be concise. Okay. So tip. Uh, when you answer questions about reading, be concise. Oh, okay. Be concise means say it short, okay? That way you won't get confused and you won't accidentally pick the wrong answer that sounds close or similar, okay? So say it short, okay? So simply put, it is about multiple touch points. Um, multiple touch points, yeah, to the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, being 
um, being to the point, it doesn't mean you have to speak short or think short, but being to the point is very important. So uh, having multiple touch points. Okay, um, so question, um, which technology does multiple touch points actually use? Um, does it use resistive or capacitive technology? Yeah, I think it's about, it's resistive, right? Uh, because it's near about X and Y axis for... No. Don't, don't make up your own information. You have to use the information that the text is giving you, okay? Never make up your own information. It said something about it here in the previous uh, paragraph, okay? Um, so um, it said one advantage of the resistive technology. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't actually say that. So it's not true that uh, the resistive allows us multiple touch points, right? The technology that allows us for multiple touch points is the capacitive. So this should be, if you're doing active reading in, in the IELTS, this should be a kind of a surprise to you as the reader that the old technology is actually the more current technology. Yeah, isn't that, that, is, isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's interesting. Right? So what device uses the old technology developed by EA Johnson that you have? Capacitive. The mobile phone, right? The smartphone. Okay, mobile yeah. phone. Yeah, the smartphone in your pocket uses the older technology or the old, I, didn't, I shouldn't say older technology because it's new technology, but the older invention, right? So um, it's the capacitive, right? Um, okay, and why is it important? Why, why do we need multiple touch points? Do I still have you with me, Anandu? I might have lost Anandu. I can see that he's still linked in, but I don't, maybe as he's switching between the websites and so on. Um, okay, so anyway, the answer to that question is so that we can have more functions. Anandu, if you come back, let me know. Um, but here, the point that I want to emphasize is that you need to be concise. Okay, you need to be concise. All right, we've got a little bit left to go, then we go on to the question. So, Anandu, I'm sorry that I lost you. It's not the end of the world. You got through uh, the key part here, which is fantastic. Okay, uh, I'm going to hang up and then try to... Um, uh, get yourself back in the class. Okay, so thanks, Anandu. Um, it was good reading. You did great reading. Okay, so your reading was really great. All right. Um, and uh, just remember uh, to be concise and only uh, use the information given. Do not make up information. Okay, or assume information. I'm writing that for everybody, okay? All right. Okay, uh, so let's take one more person. Orlando, let's see if Orlando can volunteer. Yes, absolutely. Are you ready? You have a good friend named Orlando who I haven't spoken to in a long time, but a good friend of mine from Venezuela who is currently in Costa Rica and I hope life is treating him well. Um, Orlando, if you are still there, uh, you can definitely finish up the reading for us. Okay, here we go. Also a beautiful city in the US, Orlando. Disney World, Universal Studios. Hello. Hi, Orlando. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm... Hello? I can hear you, Orlando, loud and clear. Can you hear me? I can hear you, too. Awesome. Hi there. How are you? There's a delay on the, uh, the audio. All right. Well, a lot of connections here. It's OK, Orlando. No worries. <laughs> OK, I'm fine. I'm fine. Orlando, where are you in the world? I'm from the <laughs> Philippines. I'm yeah, Philippines. Philippines. Awesome. Orlando, um, let's do a bit of reading. So uh, read the end of this passage for me from one negative aspect of capacitive whenever you're ready. Hopefully we okay. stop. Mm -hmm. Uh, one negative aspect of capacitive 
about touch technology is that a user cannot use a stylus or other object. Since these objects do not conduct electricity like a finger, but this has changed in recent years. For example, in 2015, App Apple unveiled the Apple Pencil, which used high responsive sensors built into the tip of the pencil to detect force, position, and pencil tilt to provide a multitude of effects. What is the future of touch screens? 50 years since their advent, the possibilities seem endless. One fact seems uh, doubtless, however, touch screens are a huge part of our lives and all evidence points to the saying, the case for the foreseeable future. Okay, great. What is this paragraph about? Um, the paragraph is about that the uh, touch screen is here to stay for a very long time. So we'll be using it. Yeah, we'll be absolutely. Using it for, yeah. for like, like almost forever. <laughs> it's going to be yeah, Okay, okay. Well, slow down, slow down. Yeah, that's good. Uh, now, there was one other piece there, right? It said that the touch screen is not perfect yet, right? It's not perfect yet, but it's always mm -hmm. developing. Okay, so if I, if you ask me, you know, Adrian, what is this paragraph about? I would say it's not perfect yet, but it's always developing. And if you said why, Adrian, and I said, well, you can't use non-conductive materials. Like you have to use your finger. Have you ever tried to use your smartphone with a glove? With like a glove? Pressing buttons? I know Philippines are warm, so you don't have winter there really, but maybe like a rubber glove or something? Um, no, I haven't tried it. Okay. I haven't tried it with it. Okay. No, with the gloves, no. no okay. With the gloves, I, I think it's not going to work. That's I, right. Yeah. So uh, they make special gloves uh, for people so that it works. Now, as you know, Canada has some very cold places, right? So during yeah. the winter time, people wear gloves. Guess what? They don't use their mobile phones when they're outside because they can't use their touch screen, right? Unless they have those special gloves or they have to take the glove off and their hands are really cold. Um, so uh, for people who come to Canada in wintertime, be ready for that. The mobile phone is not as easy to use during the winter. Okay, um, let's take a look at some questions and then uh, we'll provide a couple of answers. Um, you're going to help me with this, Orlando. Are you ready? We definitely have a bit of a delay. Um, yes. Okay, Orlando, we've got a bit of delay. So to make this go a little bit smoother, I'm going to reach out to somebody else, but thank you so much for the reading and I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day in the Philippines, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, bye Orlando. Bye. All right, that was Orlando. We definitely had a bit of delay. We were probably being bounced around Jupiter and back. All right, let's let's uh, let's take somebody else here um, for the questions. So we're on to the questions now. We want to answer these questions. We've got a really good understanding of the passage, right? Because we basically spent an hour on this passage. I gave you lots of tips and strategies and even some tricks on how to get a great score. So. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the questions and hopefully we'll be able to answer these questions without too much trouble now so let's read out to <laughs> let's reach out to Tommy Tommy said that um, he didn't get to read but Tommy you get to answer questions with me so how does that sound are you ready are you still there or did you get angry and run away after not having a chance to read okay let's see hopefully Tommy's like wait 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 it's not over yet it's not over until the fat lady sings, as the saying goes from theater, right? Okay, Carolina, thanks up for the uh, thumbs up, by the way, for Orlando. That's awesome. So hang in there, everybody. Yep, oh, there's Tommy. Tommy says, oh, oh, well, what's going on? Uh, Tommy, you gonna help me with some questions? Hopefully. That's eh, okay, I'm here, I'm with you. I'm like your personal assistant to help you with questions. Don't worry about it. Okay, do you want to do it? I'll help you. I will help you. 
you will see the passage. Okay, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Tommy says, okay, let's go, let's do it. All right, that it, that's it. Confidence, Tommy, confidence. Hi, Tommy. Can you hear me? Are you there? Ooh, Tommy might get a pass because I can't hear Tommy. Uh, Tommy, you have to make sure that you've enabled your microphone, your speakers on the website. You have it set up right on your computer, on your mobile phone as well. Okay, otherwise we will not hear each other. Mm, I don't hear Tommy. All right, Tommy, check it out with somebody else and then check back, okay? Because I definitely do not hear you. But I do see that you picked up. Okay, let's try somebody else. All right. Um, Abdul, I think, has been waiting patiently. Okay, can you help me with some questions, Abdul? Okay. Let's see if Abdul... And you never know when I'm going to reach out to you because we're hosting this class from Canada, but we're reaching out all over the world. So we've had people from Viet Vietnam, Philippines, and lots of other places uh, around the world, India. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that we can do this. Here we go, Abdul. All right. Yep. I see somebody says they had a network issue there. It's okay. All right. Abdul, I cannot hear you. <clears throat> I hear that you picked up as well. Again, students, uh, big tip, uh, test the system with somebody else. I can tell right away when uh, we connect and I can't hear your voice that um, something in the setup is not working. So uh, try to um, set that up. All right. Uh, let's try this again. Um, so, Sabina. Hi, Sabina. Uh, can you help me answer questions? Are you ready? We'll find someone. A little bit of patience will go a long ways here as we go through the questions. And we've got plenty of time. By the way, um, students, in the IELTS exam, you should leave about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes for questions. That will give you an average of about 40 to 50 seconds per question. Um, easier questions, you should be able to answer much faster, maybe in like 20, 30 seconds. But uh, some of the more difficult or challenging questions can take even two or three minutes. So the average should be around uh, 40 to 50 seconds, okay? So make sure that you time that at home, okay? All right, Sabina, here we go. Hello. Hi, Sabina, how are you? I'm good, you? Awesome. Sabina, where are you in our big, beautiful world? Well, I'm from Bangladesh. From Bangladesh, awesome. Okay, Sabina, help me out here. Let's do some of these uh, questions for this reading. Don't panic, I'm here to help you. Okay, um, so here we go. Uh, let's look at um, the uh, first bit here. This question, the, the title of the summary topic, the answers usually come in the order of the passage for this, okay? Okay, so all right, so let's do this. Now, even though you know the questions and answers come in order for this type of question, you shouldn't be searching for every question. We'll do our best here though, okay? All right, so go ahead and read this part here, capacitive touchscreens, and then read the first sentence, the first question. Okay, Johnson touchscreen used then as an insulator and a transparent conductor coating. Okay, good. Uh, what type of word comes into this space for 27? Is it going to be a verb, an adjective, adverb, or a noun? What do you think? Noun. 
Yeah, absolutely, because it comes after the verb used, right? So it's got to be a noun, okay? So yes. uh, Johnson's touchscreens used something, a noun, as an insulator. Uh, what do you think is the right answer for that? You're running out of time. There's no more time for your IELTS. You're almost at the end of the reading section. You have to take a guess. You're going to do your best guess based on everything that you read. What do you think is the answer? Oh, what happened? Did we just lose our, did I just scare off our <laughs> viral video it says glass. Um, I think we just lost uh, Sabina. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Sabina says network issue. All right, no worries. Let's try it. I'll reach out to you again, Sabina. It's all good. And I see that quite a few students, so viral uh, video on and Rashika all are saying it's glass. It's glass. Okay. I think Sabina is still having a network issue. Yeah, absolutely, students. So you have to, don't overthink it. It's not necessarily going to be a very tricky answer here. And a lot of people are saying glass, and glass it is, right? Glass is an insulator. Glass does not conduct electricity. Now, if I had to search for this, it would be at the beginning of the passage. And it's not in the introduction because it's body paragraph two that talks about um, Johnson and Johnson's invention it's first introduced and then they give an explanation it worked by using an insulator usually glass okay so there's the word glass and that's the correct answer all right uh, let me try to find um, another person to help me here okay let's see if we can reach out to Yash Okay, Yash, do you want to help me answer some questions? Uh, are you ready? Okay. And by the way, Sabina, thank you for volunteering. I appreciate it um, all the way from Bangladesh. Okay, so Yash, if you are there, um, let me know and then we'll go through these questions together. Okay. I've run out of water. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you still have some. Okay, uh, here we go, Yash. Oh, I heard Yash pick up quickly, but I don't hear your voice. Okay, not sure what's going on there. Let's give it a second. Sometimes the voice will kick in. So sometimes depending like if you're using a VPN, like a proxy network, um, proxy networks will sometimes uh, adjust for connectivity, but not always, right? So, okay, well, I'm a very optimistic and hopeful person. So I'm going to try one more person. And then if we have uh, difficulties, then I will uh, go through the questions on my own here. Let's try Sam again. Um, so Sam, let's see if you're there. Okay. Are you there? <clears throat> Sam got to the top of the list. <laughs> so let's reach out to Sam. I think we've talked to Sam before. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he's in Taiwan or Vietnam, maybe. Um, let's see if Sam is still there and then we'll get some help from Sam. Okay. Sam's still there. Mm, Sam, what's with all these quick pickups but no voice? Uh, Sam, can you hear me? I don't hear you. Um, okay, Sam says, sorry, sir. So something going on on that end. It's a network issue. What's going on in the world? Everybody's having network issues today. All right, well, I won't torture you any longer. Um, Yash is calling me back. Let's try, Yash. <laughs> all right. Hi, Yash. Can you hear me? All right. I won't torture you any longer. Okay, I'm going to get out of the chat, everyone. I'm just going to look at the passage and we're going to do this together with the chat. Okay, so let's go through the questions and answers together then and you can put your answers into the chat. Okay, so we're on to number 28 here. 
Um, and number 28, let's read it together. Something worked as the conductor and because the dose of electricity was small, it did not affect the person's health. Now, even if you didn't get number 27 glass, and if you are a band six level student, you should definitely get the answer for number 28, okay? Un, you don't need the word acted because worked means acted, okay? So just deep, you have the correct answer there, which is finger, okay? The finger worked, okay? We have the, so you don't need the, we just need finger, the finger, and sorry, no capital because we have the capital letter here with finger, okay? Not ringer, <laughs> finger. Uh, so the finger worked as the conductor and because the dose of electricity was small, it did not affect the person's health. Very good, okay, now we're switching gears and we're on to resistive touch screens, okay? So we kept in mind the questions, the content here. Um, so this technology was developed by accident. Instead of making calculations by hand, they used a special kind of something which conducted electricity. Now again, ideally you're not searching for this answer because it was very clear. If I had to, I know that I need to go back to the paragraph uh, that's about resistive touch screens. But that paragraph is pretty big, okay? It's this one here, it's, it's the one that me read, and it's a huge paragraph, so it's going to be hard to search for information. And in fact, this one is right in the middle of the paragraph, um, so it was paper. Good job, Amrit. Uh, it was a special kind of paper, some kind of paper that had, um, that could pass electricity, right? So it was a special kind of paper uh, which conducted electricity. All right. Okay, uh, when the researchers applied for a patent for the technology, they were denied. I thought this was very interesting. Uh, patent officers did not believe the technology had any something applications outside of the laboratory. Okay, um, it didn't have any something applications. Now here, it's going to be an adjective, right? Because applications is the noun. So we're looking for an adjective. If I'm having trouble with this, I might look for the word patent, okay? Because patent is a unique noun. And as a unique noun, it's going to be easier. Now I'm still looking at resistive touch screens, right? So I'm still looking at that part of the text. So if I go back and I look at this part, and I know that this is the paragraph that talks about it, right? That I'm looking for the word patent, okay? And that was somewhere kind of in the beginning. So I'm, I'm scanning here for the word patent and I find it right here, right? So the University of uh, Kentucky applied for a patent but was rejected. The discovery did not seem to the patent, I see it there again, to the patent officers to have any, ah, there it is, relevant applications, right? So we find that word. Now this is the word where I want to be searching, right? So it did not have any relevant applications, okay? Make sure you find the right word because that's what they're looking for. So relevant, uh, we put in the word relevant and then we move on to question 31. Hearst was no longer bothered by worries about something, so he toiled in his off hours with friends to refine his invention. Okay, so here you have to understand a bit of the passage, and we're still talking about resistive touchscreens, so it's still that one huge paragraph, okay? Now the unique noun that I can look for here is Hearst, okay? And it's coming after because this is in order, right? So uh, let's take a look, okay? Okay. 
So here we go, freed from intellectual property concerns. Hearst later worked during his off hours. So freed from intellectual property concerns. Correct answer, intellectual property. Okay, freed is the paraphrase of no longer needed to worry. Okay, so pay attention uh, to the paraphrasing. Okay, that's how IELTS works is they paraphrase the information. So you don't find no longer needed to worry, but you find the word freed instead. Okay, so Hearst no longer or no longer bothered by intellectual property concerns or worried about intellectual property. So he toiled in his off hours with friends to refine his invention. All right, okay, We've got one more left for this. No hands required. Hmm, all right, uh, so let's read this one. Uh, Hearst developed his technology to the point that while one could still use a finger to manipulate the touchscreen, a person could also use a something, a device akin to a pen with no ink. This one we talked about quite a bit during the class, so you should not have to read it again. It was a unique noun, so hopefully a lot of you caught it. Let's see if anybody in the chat is able to answer this question without me giving it to them. Okay, Rashika intellectual property is perfect for the previous, but for number 32, the correct answer is not a cover sheet. That's right, Rajesh, it's the stylus. Now, stylus is the name of the pen, so you can capitalize that because it's a unique kind of special name of the pen, okay? So it's a stylus, all right? It's not a pencil, Amri, it's a stylus. It's a special kind of pen-like device. Okay, everyone, so now we have these true, false, not given questions. However, I have very little time left in this class, so I'm not going to rush through these questions. Um, you can do these questions on your own and then email the answers, and I will email back the answer key. Send your answers to me, to my email, adrian at aehelp.com, okay? So, that is my email. Um, you can send your answers to adrian at aehelp.com. Let me uh, do this. Okay, aehelp, it's dot .com, okay? <laughs> nope, dot .com, let's see you whoop, dot .com. <laughs> All right, let me try that one more time. Here we go, adrian at aehelp.com. Okay, so that's where you want to send your answers and then I will send you an answer key. Um, also, uh, if you're like, oh, but I really wanted to know the true, false, not given strategy, we just put a new video on our YouTube channel, an HD video, not a live class video, but an HD video that shows you that strategy for yes, no, not given, true, false, not given with a different passage. So check out that video, subscribe to our channel. Uh, get notifications of when we have these live classes, when we release new videos, and come back tomorrow. We have writing task one for the academic, for members of our channel, and then we have speaking part three, where everybody will be able to join the chat. And like with the reading today, for speaking part three, we will actually speak with our viewers, and you will get to practice for real um, your IELTS speaking and your English, of course, more importantly. That is it for me for today. Uh, don't forget to visit our websites and use uh, this discount code uh, to get access to our premium package, all of our videos, all of our practice exams. We are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. We have helped thousands of students over the last 15 years to succeed on their general and academic IELTS by uh, going to our websites, which are aehelp.com for academic IELTS 
and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Thank you so much, viewers. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, hopefully, I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Much love to all of you, wherever you are in our world. Bye for now.